Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Let's talk about Starbucks again. So there's a global boycott underway against Starbucks due to the perception uh, that Starbucks is a Zionist company and that they support Israel. Now, Starbucks has reiterated uh, many times that this is not the case, that this is not true. They say that they have never sent money to Israel and they've even denied uh, that Howard Schultz, the former CEO, uh, that he sent money to Israel. They denied all of that. Uh, now, they did file a lawsuit against union workers uh, who had issued a public statement in support of the Palestinians. But in my opinion, this lawsuit has more to do with Starbucks uh, wanting to break the union uh, rather than uh, Starbucks being pro-Israeli specifically. Nevertheless, Starbucks has been completely unable uh, to shake the public perception that they support Zionism. And this perception is going to kill that company. In Malaysia, customers have abandoned Starbucks to such an extent <clears throat> that in just uh, the last three weeks, the franchise has had to uh, reduce operation hours across the country in all of their shops. The next step, if the boycott continues, will be the closure of individual stores. And eventually, uh, if the boycott continues, Starbucks will cease to exist in Malaysia. Now, the franchise in Malaysia is Muslim-owned. Uh, most of the st uh, staff at Starbucks in Malaysia are Muslim Malays. The franchise owner in Malaysia has actually donated to Palestinian causes and Palestinian charities. Most of the money from the uh, Malaysian Starbucks stays in Malaysia. Only a, a percentage of that money goes to Seattle, and even that money, we haven't actually been able to confirm if any of that money ever ends up going to Israel because Starbucks has denied uh, that it does any of that. So what's the actual point uh, in boycotting Starbucks? And specifically, uh, what's the point of boycotting a locally owned franchise of Starbucks that has absolutely no connection whatsoever to Israel and which actually uh, has donated money to Palestinians and they employ Muslim Malays and they generate money uh, for the Malaysian economy. So why boycott Starbucks? Is that even fair? I mean, what about the workers uh, who will lose their jobs? Well, Starbucks is a global brand. In many ways, Starbucks is a symbol uh, of the West. It's a, it's a symbolic ambassador of the United States and of corporate imperialism. It's more of a symbolic target than a practical one, but boycotting it can have a practical impact. You know, members of our Telegram group wrote hundreds, if not thousands, of letters to Starbucks over the last couple of weeks, and they're continuing to do so. And the responses from Starbucks uh, over the course of uh, 10 days or so has started to change. The initial responses uh, were for them to reiterate their position against the union workers. But the more uh, recent responses have emphasized, quote-unquote, listening to uh, customer concerns. That indicates that an impact is being made. Across the globe, Starbucks is being boycotted, and uh, you, you can see that their products are being sold at uh, ridiculous discounts now, 70% discounts sometimes. Their share price is going down, has been going down for two weeks. And like I said, uh, store hours are being reduced in some places. I've seen that hundreds of workers uh, have been let go in some countries because of the uh, plummeting revenues. And there's no end in sight. The company is losing hope uh, of any expansion into the global south all because of the public perception that it is a pro-Zionist company. There's only one thing that can save them at this point, and that is to take an unequivocally pro-Palestine position uh, publicly, a pro-Palestine stance as a company, as a brand. And now that shouldn't be hard to do. It shouldn't even be controversial to do, actually. Israeli war crimes have been condemned by the United Nations. They're violating international law on a daily basis, Multiple heads of state and human rights organizations uh, have all characterized Israel's actions in Gaza as genocide. Starbucks has more stores internationally than they have in the U.S., and they expect for uh, something like two-thirds of their revenues uh, to be generated overseas in the next couple of years. They do not have to appeal uh, exclusively to American customers anymore. And in fact, they must appeal to customers abroad. I think half of the, uh, the new store openings have been in Asia lately. Well, as I've said before, the Global South is pro-Palestinian. I would even argue that uh, most Westerners who go to Starbucks are very likely also pro-Palestinian cosmopolitan liberals. So there's no real uh, business-related reason for Starbucks to not take 
a positive stance on Palestine, or to at least uh, condemn Israeli crimes against humanity. If they continue to insist on so-called neutrality, uh, or insist on remaining so-called apolitical, uh, the company will lose market share all around the world. This is what democratizing corporate power looks like. The people are finally taking their seat at the negotiating table with corporate power, and they're demanding representation. They're demanding to be heard. They're saying, we are only going to do business with companies that reflect our values. The people are injecting morality into the equation uh, of corporate market strategy. In many ways, this is bigger than the Palestinian issue, but the Palestinian issue is the battleground where populations all around the world are coming to confront global corporate power, Western private sector power, imperialistic power. Think about it. Uh, you close down the economy all around the world over COVID. You shut everyone up in their homes for two years. You force thousands of small businesses into bankruptcy with lockdowns. And all the major corporate players benefited from that. Monopolistic consolidation accelerated. But you taught us how to not shop, how to not go to restaurants, how to not go to malls and so on. You taught us discipline and self-restraint in terms of our consumer activity. Now we have those skills. You imposed uh, economic shutdown on us, but now we have the skills to impose it on you. We can impose a COVID-style shutdown of the economy over the Palestinian issue. We don't need Starbucks. We don't need any of you. And we can shut you down. Are Starbucks employees going to lose their jobs? Of course they will. But companies close all the time if they can't appeal to the market. That's the risk you take. Aren't you always talking about how uh, business owners are taking a risk and that's why they should uh, be able to take all of the profits and shortchange their employees? And now you act like you care about the workers. How many small local cafes and coffee shops got muscled out of the market by Starbucks? How many local shops... Uh, got closed because they couldn't compete with massive uh, multinational corporate conglomerates. Well, we can reverse all that now. You know, if you own a small business and you're not putting a Free Palestine sticker in your window, uh, I'll tell you, you're not a very savvy business person. Everyone is going to be looking uh, for local alternatives, smaller companies, alternatives to the amoral multinationals that refuse to take the right stand on the Palestinian issue. Those smaller companies are going to profit from this, or they should, and that will create jobs. So if someone loses their job at a multinational franchise, uh, they should be able to find a job at a local business. That's better for national economies anyway, especially for the ones in the global south. So it doesn't matter if it's Starbucks or anyone else. We will assume uh, that you're a pro-Zionist company unless you say otherwise, unless you prove otherwise. You don't need a list of companies to boycott. It's not just about uh, companies that overtly support Israel. Though, of course, those companies should be boycotted. But any company uh, should be avoided if they have not taken a positive stance on Palestine. No justice, no profit should be applied across the board in all of our economic activity, all of our uh, consumer activity. We can just do COVID all over again. Except this time, instead of shutting down the small local businesses, it would be against all of those big players who reaped the benefits of lockdowns. And if you want to avoid that, if you want to protect your market share, well, you know what to do. Zionism is the virus now. You used to make us confirm uh, that we were vaccinated before you let us into your shops, before you let us into your stores, you make us wear masks and whatnot. Well, now you have to confirm to us that you don't have that virus, that your company has been uh, vaccinated against Zionism by being pro-Palestine, if you want us to come in. You used to keep us out, you know, and refuse our business if we weren't vaccinated. Well, now we're staying out and we refuse to give you our business if you aren't vaccinated against Zionism. So again, don't just look for companies uh, that overtly support Israel. Look at any company that doesn't support Palestine. Let the market know that the only successful strategy for gaining customers uh, is to take a positive stand on this issue. Jazakumullahu khairan wa alaikum.